using the car owners project that you created in the database videos number 16 and 17 where you did the model within the models let's learn how to add authorization so go ahead and open up that project and then the first thing I want you to do is go to your home folder and there's your index view at your car database tracker and we're going to learn how to add uh, security to this form that in order for this form to pop up in this view to be displayed the users have to enter in a username and a password and we're going to authenticate those just through a hard-coded uh, string but you could actually go and attach this view the login view to a database a user's database and then search for that username and check to see if it matches the password that they've typed in within that database record in our case, we'll just hard code it though. So adding authorization to a project can be done either via a controller and action method, or we can specify a role on that controller. But we're gonna show how to do it through an action method. The first thing that we wanna do is we wanna go and modify our web config. So I'm gonna open up our web config and we're gonna look for a section that deals with our security. And that is your system web section and your system.web server. Now, what we need to do for the system.web server is we need to remove the authentication that's working with it right now. So in your system.web, there's an authentication mode line. I want you to highlight that line and just get rid of it. And that's telling the system that we're gonna handle our own authentication we're going to say that we're going to set up authentication and the mode is going to be forms base. And this is an alternative to Windows authentication where the operating system credentials are used uh, on something like maybe cloud or Azure. So we want to add the following to that web, that system.web section. So let's come into our system.web and we want to add that we're going to be doing authentication via forms and the actual form that we're going to use is going to be our home controller login action method and the timeout is going to be 2,880 minutes or in other words 48 hours and what, once that expires then they'll have to log in again. This login URL tells ASP.NET where to redirect users when they have to authenticate. And so we're saying authenticate through the login action method in the home controller. Now what we need to do is we also need to go and modify our system web server right here. And we need to say, get rid of that forms authentication, just get rid of the line because our other line up here is handling all the authentication that we're working with. Go ahead and save that. Now we need to scroll up and go to our app start and we need to look at the startup.auth.cs. Within the startup.auth, we need to comment out a lot of this code because this is the code that actually goes in and says when the program starts, we wanna go ahead and set up a whole bunch of security and we're gonna have cookies set up for that part of that security and so what we need to do is just come into here from now and we're just going to add a slash asterisk and we're going to go ahead and comment out what we call Owen. Owen is a way to authenticate with security. So we want to come out, comment out that entire section. So all of that code within this in the config auth is now commented. Go ahead and save that. Now what we want to do is we want to create a brand new view in the home views. So we can go ahead and close these two files that we've been working with. Actually, we'll close all of those. And now let's go create that login for the home views. So I'll come down to my views folder and we'll go to the home folder, right mouse click on home and choose add view. And we're going to go ahead and we'll need to change that name to be login 
We'll do empty without a model. Go ahead and click add. And then what I want you to do is this is going to be the view that allows the user to type in a username and password. So this is what we're going to put in there. We're going to start a begin HTML begin form with the helper. And we're going to say that we're using the login action method with the home controller. And when they click on the submit button, it's going to be a post. We're going to have a label for input mail. And we're going to call that email address. And there's going to be a text box to go and get that email address. And then we're going to set up a label for input password called password. And we have an actual HTML helper called password. So as you type things, you'll see asterisks showing up. And then we have our button for the submit, which we just call login. Let's go ahead and save and build the project. And notice we don't have any errors, which is always a great sign. Now we're going to go to the home controller. So let's scroll up into the controllers and open up the home controller. And now we need to add an action method, a get action method for that login view. So I'll just come into here and I'll paste in my get action method, which says if you ever call this, we're just going to return the view, which is the newly created view we just made. And then since we're actually doing a post on it, not only do we have to have our HTTP get, but we have to do an HTTP post. And here's that HTTP post for the login action method, which says it's going to receive a parameter of type form collection. That's the HTML form. We'll call it form. And a Boolean called remember me, which we assign as a false for right now. You'll learn more about that later. So here's our post for the login. We set up two variables. One is it's called email, which we say go to the form we just received, which was your HTML form from the view. And let's pull out the data for email address as a string and do the same thing for password. Now, if you take a look back over here, there's the text box for email address. There's the password. So we're saying pull that data out of that view and store it in those variables. Then all we do and since we have the data from the form with what they've typed in, we just do an if statement that says, did they type in in that email part of the form, greg at test.com, and did they type in the password, greg? If they did, then we're going to do what they call a forms authentication. And notice you need to resolve that using web security. We'll do a forms authentication. We're going to set a cookie using that email with the remember me parameter. And then we're going to send them back to the home index saying now they can go ahead and get into our program. Otherwise, we'll just send them right back to the login system. So notice in this action method, we added that user system dot web security, which we resolved with that forms authentication. So the next thing we need to do is we just need to go back to the home index controller. So here's our home index controller right here. And we can just say in order to run that, we add an attribute called authorize, which says anytime you try to go to this action method, we will authorize, which says go and call that login screen and make sure that they type in the right username and password. So let's go ahead and build that. And let's go ahead and run that index application and see how it works. So look that when we first went to, we tried to go to the index action method for the home controller, and it said there's an authorize on it. So we redirected to the login action method for the home controller. And I could type in anything I want here. And then we say, let's go look at the code. Did it match the username, email address, and the password? No, it didn't. So I had to type in greg at test.com and the password of greg. Click login. And it says, yep, you authenticate. So let's go ahead and allow them into the index for the home controller, which is what we built earlier that shows all of our cars and allows us to add owners to it. And that's how you set up an authorized login screen.
where users have to be authorized to get to another view.